Hi everybody! Hello Theo! Ooh, I want to talk about magical and non-magical animal rights in the story of Harry Potter. So JK Rowling, she has said repeatedly that the magical world, the wizarding world, is a mirror, mirroring world to our world. And I think it's very interesting to look at the way that they treat magical animals and non-magical animals and see how that mirrors our own uh, behavior and attitude towards those animals in our world and I think first of all they use animal parts to make magical stuff magical artifacts mm -hmm. magical potions Ugh. essence of crab right the wands have a phoenix feather as a core or right. a dragon's something custom, something something from an animal an animal so is in there for their industry which is like we do right to make shoes, to make belts, to make all kinds of clothes. Clothes, food. Yeah, I'm not, so, so they, uh, they're eating the animals <laughs> that we know, but they're yeah. also using it for like their mass production of stuff. Sure. So it's interesting is that they call it, that they said that the Phoenix gave the feather to right, Harry's wand and Voldemort's wand. Mm. Gave. That the Phoenix, whose tail feather resides in your wand, gave another feather. So you could say, okay, maybe the phoenix willingly gave it away, but you also say that the cow gives milk. I don't think she actually gives it. I think it's very much uh, taken away. But just like I think the overall assumption that I they have... If, if you don't milk the cow, I think they explode from milk, right? But do you know that the milk, that the cow's milk has been prepared for a gazillion years to, for one purpose alone? For the other calves. For the calf. Right. right. So it's not, been, it's not supposed to be milled so much because then it gets bigger. And it's not good for you also because evolutionary wise you're not supposed to turn from a little calf to a giant cow. But I digress. I want this to be, I want the propaganda, the vegan propaganda to be something subtle, un, subtle, subtle. And, and unnoticeable. <laughs> That might be hard. That might be hard? Yeah. Okay. The, the overarching uh, frame of mind that wizards have are very much like the ones that we have towards animals. We can use them to our benefit. Right. Sometimes it, we, we have to hurt them, hurt them for it. Sometimes maybe we don't. But basically, if we have stuff that we need to use from an, we'll just, animal. From an animal, so we'll just go ahead and do it. Right. What should I ever do next? Jump out the window? Drown herself? So when you were reading that as a right. non-vegan, right. did that did you notice it? Or maybe just me because that they I'm were sensitive. torturing the spider, like uh, yeah. with the cruciatus and this yeah. stuff? Crucio! Uh, so you're supposed to feel something, right? Right. But I don't think I was like particularly I, I cared about the spider particularly. And what about the hippogriff? Why do they have to, 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 to change this hippogriff and use him to teach kids? And the hippogriff, it doesn't like humans or kids or whatever. It stresses him out. It becomes aggressive. Back off, Harry. Back off. Oh, he, he liked Harry. Yeah, but maybe he would have liked it better to just like be, do whatever he wants to do. He has to learn to like Harry, left right? Left alone. Right. Just left alone. Just do your own shit. Right. Why? Just be a hippogriff. Just, just be a hippogriff. Just run around and peck. Like, the, like a hippogriff has to have a trial in order to be killed, right? Mm -hmm. It's illegal to, 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 to just kill a hippogriff, mm. which is very much the same like in our world. It's illegal to hurt a dog. It has legal rights. If you hit a dog, this is against the law. Good. But, but if you hit another kind of animal, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. They don't. So this is like the same hierarchy that they have in their world, right? Mm -hmm. Cultures have interesting relationships with their chosen special uh, animals, you know, like yeah. like ancient Egypt famously worshipped cats, yes. right? And apparently, like if you heard a cat in ancient Egypt, like a little house uh, cat, like uh, they would riot and they would rip your arms out of your sockets. They would like kill you. They would ki kill you alive. And in India, you cannot you, you, you cannot hurt uh, cows if you're a Hindu. It's against the law. Uh. Yeah. But you can hurt dogs there. Dogs, dogs there, they, they yeah. don't care about the dogs. Okay. So there's not something inherent in these specific animals that makes the them. It's right. the culture. Right. It's, it's how much we feel that they how are worthy. We, yeah, it's how we've, and what we've decided to humanize, what we've decided like has a soul, has a psyche, right? Right. Uh, Deserves our compassion. Deserve, exactly. Right. And however we, as a social organism, make those decisions. Right. 
which so is kind of seems a little random. It's rats, nobody cares. Pigs. Wow, pigs. Pigs are filthy animals. I don't eat filthy animals. Pigs sleep and root and shit. That's a filthy animal. I ain't eat nothing, ain't got sense enough to disregard its own feces. How about a dog? Dog eats his own feces. But dogs got personality. Personality goes a long way. Uh, so by that rationale, if a pig had a better personality, he would cease to be a filthy animal. Is that true? Well, we have to be talking about one charming motherfucking pig. Chickens. What have the chickens ever done to us? Man. Chickens and, and pigs, they don't, they got a tough, tough road ahead in this, ahead. in this world. Like in Harry Potter, they like rats more than we do anyway, in New York. Like in New York, <laughs> rats are like, mm. they're just part of the scenery, kind of. Right. Um, but we definitely don't keep them as pets. And like Ron's like has a pet rat and that's just like cool, because that's a thing. Like you could have a cat, an owl, or a rat. Right. Which is ridiculous. 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 <laughs> Which is kind of crazy because, first of all, an owl is amazing, yes. right? Like having a pet owl yes. would be amazing. Having a pet cat is pretty cool, but both of those things eat rats ah. on a regular basis. Ah. <laughs> In fact, that's like how they survive, right? So, I don't know, oh, you got some... That's a plot hole. A little bit. I mean, the fact that Hermione's cat was chasing the rat around. Yeah. In that, that was because of the specific uh, person that was the right, cat. Not right. Not because of pure evolutionary uh, no, necessity. Okay. Right. Right. That, yeah. Right. They were like, what are you doing? They were shocked. Yeah. They this were shocked. This cat is chasing after a mouse. This is a crazy cat. What is this, what is this <laughs> lunatic cat of yours, Hermione? <laughs> Uh, but one thing about, about it being awesome, having uh, pet owls. So you know oh, that, would be very cool. that a lot of people took owls, free owls, and caged them and took them back home or bought owls, like the owl industry. Because mm, of Harry Potter? Because of Harry wow. Potter yeah. was very, very dangerous and disastrous to owls. Well, yeah, I mean. Like, yeah, they're like, just like booming. And they're basically the slaves of the wizards. The owls. They have to go, go get there, fly over there, do that. Fucking learn how to use a telephone. Like, they don't <laughs> want to learn how to use a telephone. They want to send the owls. Send Just the let the owls be, chill. Because it's, it's whimsical. But Hedwig, I mean, is more than a, than, a, than a slave. I mean, Hedwig is like he loves Harry. I mean... Masters love their slaves, and slaves love their masters. Sure. I think that the master race and master class's tendency to justify why we are on top, they are on, they are on the bottom. It's always the same justifications, even if it's directed at uh, people with different pigmentation, different genders, different sexual orientation, or different in, 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 in this world, different magical abilities. I want to have money, so I will use slaves, or I want you to stay at home and not work because I feel better about it. I don't want to see you kissing another person of your gender. It's always, it's, it, it comes like from, from a very egotistical point of view. If tomorrow they learn how to use a magic phone, then maybe they won't need the, the owls anymore. And then maybe a hundred years later they'll say, wow, oh, do you know how we treated those owls? Like they do about the goblins, right? Oh, we mistreated the goblins or the giants. Mm. This is the same thing that, uh, that humans have, right? Oh my goodness, people had slaves, this is crazy. Oh mm. my goodness, women couldn't vote. Mm. Oh my goodness, uh, look how we mistreated the uh, LGBTQs. It's gonna be the same with animals, mm. someday. Yeah. And I think this is mirrored perfectly in the story. Mm. Right, well, it goes back to the cultural values, right? So if this world decides that humanity is bestowed upon house cats and crocodiles in the river as mm -hmm. opposed to uh, labradoodles, right? right? Then the labradoodle is going to be treated like garbage, <laughs> right? And the house cat, because it's a projection of the humanity of yeah. the dominant uh, social class. Right. right, right. So then the labradoodle is screwed in that world, right? right? And the arbitrary right. house cat, the tabby house cat, right? the Garfields of Egypt are sitting pretty. Um, that being said, I, I adore my own dog and I want him to have right. a great life. And you, know. and you would judge somebody if you would, if somebody that comes from a culture that doesn't appreciate dogs, 
if you would see them mistreating a dog, you would be like, no, what are you doing? Yeah. This is wrong. Well, I mean, it's hard for you to talk about this because the, the, whatever, your values, how you see this is connected to... If you would see here somebody mistreating a, a pig, you will not like it, you will object to it, you will say, what the fuck are you doing? If it's somebody <laughs> hitting a pig or taking, it, taking its babies or whatever. There is an invisible belief system or ideology that conditions us to eat certain animals. And I named this system carnism. Now, carnism is a dominant ideology, meaning that it's so widespread, its doctrine is seen as a given rather than a choice. Eating animals is just the way things are. Like, you're literally talking about every human civilization yeah. from the history of time would yeah. use animal parts. Yeah. And that's part of how they end up in witches' spells from, yeah. you know, from history. It's basically common to every primitive society, every pre- you know, pre-linguistic society, right? I mean, you're talking about, this is caveman type shit that we would right. take out the innards of an animal and uh, ascribe it yeah, with right. supernatural right. powers. And Maybe it, it used to be harder to get the, the goat's intestines to make that potion, that antidote that uh, Harry gives to Ron, and then he doesn't die, whatever, was, because you had to go and get it yourself. You, you can't get it in a supermarket or whatever. Right. Right. So right now you can get all kinds of stuff very easily without doing the hard work, you don't have to right. kill the actual animal and just uh, rip out its, its intestines. Right? Because if you did, then less people would do it. Less people would do <laughs> it, for sure. So we talked mostly about like animals, uh, magical animals, but it goes into magical humanoids, and that's something that is very, very apparent in the story, the rights of the humanoids, of goblins, and house elves, and giants. That's right. The civil rights issue, the underlying or background civil rights issues of, of the books, is the treatment of humanoid uh, creatures such as goblins and house elves and, and giants and, and dragons to an extent. But Hermione, for example, becomes this sort of activist yeah. for, house, for the rights of house elves, right? And there's always this weird tension between this idea that they are sort of enchanted to desire servitude, right? That it's in their, it's in their nature, right? That's hard. That's hard. Which is rough, right? Rough. But it's magic, right? So you're like, all right, well, if it's, if it's a spell, what do I know? Dobby has heard of your greatness, sir, but never has he been asked to sit down by a wizard. Oh. But it's also rough to see the, the characters that you love just, like, don't care about... Right, like, Ron rights. is like... Right. He's, yeah, even he's, Harry. Right. But Ron is low-key an asshole the whole time, right? <laughs> he's, kind of a terrib he's kind of a terrible dude a little bit. You watch the tension play out with Dobby. Dobby is free. Who's right. like the one house elf who expresses some individuality, right? Who mm. wants to wear different clothes, who gets his freedom, who admires Harry Potter, right? He's so wired as an individual that even in the face of like brutal self-punishment, right, right, he still acts, right? He still chooses to right. do good things, right? You could have killed me! Dobby never meant to kill. Dobby only meant to maim or seriously injure. How dare you defy your masters! Dobby has no master. Dobby is a free elf. Which Dobby basically makes the case that all the treatment of all house elves is wrong. Wrong. Even though they don't agree with him. Even though they don't agree. The goblins, they used to be disenfranchised and they had to go into goblin wars, whatever, to get some independence. And the giants were mistreated and had to go somewhere else. And then they become a threat. Also, the goblins are now... Now, now people say that uh, they're not nice. So, so in Israel, we had like a movement of uh, Mizrahi, whatever, uh, Jews that came from the Arab countries. And they wanted to be... There. They said, um, the, the, the white Jews are looking down on us, mistreating us. Supposedly everything is equal, but it's not, uh, it's not the case. And the then Prime Minister said that they're not nice. So that became kind of like a phrase. Code. Code. A like dog whistle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These uh, people, they're not nice, right. not polite, they're not right? nice people. They're not civil or right. something. So this is the goblins now. They're not nice, the goblins. Right. Well, did you see, I saw at least some people online saying that they thought the representation of goblins was is an anti-Semitic trope. 
And that's a medic? Yeah. Ah, because they're in the bank? Dude, <laughs> I, I actually kind of found it oh. insulting that, I mean, I know the person who was saying it didn't mean it this way, but the fact that they went there, I was like, yeah. that kind of made me angrier than anything J.K. Rowling wrote. That, that kind of irks me, that just the <laughs> idea. But I don't know, maybe in the English psyche, maybe that's, I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about it. Hi, Grish. What exactly are these things? Like Jewish people. I mean, because they do have some of the consistency in, t in terms of like, they're their own little community. They're very touchy about, um, about like ownership and property. Right. right? Oh, they and they have a big do nose. all the banking. They have big noses. How are you? Absolutely. Uh, the way goblins and Harry Potter are, you know, they're so preoccupied with the ownership with who made the sword of Gryffindor, right? That feels like a very, something that a, a, a dwarf in a Norse myth might do, right? Which right. feels, which, which there's rollover for sure into banking and I think zero roll over right. into Judaism. Oh man, now I feel like comfortable. <laughs> I, I, I would have preferred that you, that I would never have heard of it. Well, I don't like it. Stupid. That's why Twitter is so horrible oh. because they put these things in your brain. All right, I'm not gonna lie, it occurred to me before I saw it. It occurred Twitter. to you? Yes, yes. It never when I, when they me. first walked in the bank and I saw the noses and the, no. and the thing, I was like, Maybe eh. it was your, your Italian side, your anti-Semitic Italian side that hates you. No, no, your... it was definitely my, 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 my Jewish paranoia uh -huh. side that was like, is this anti-Semitic? Ah, there are also the Minotaurs, right? The Minotaurs, the half-horse uh, humans. Oh, now you mean the centaurs? The centaurs, yeah. sorry. What's a Minotaur? Is Minotaur is the bullhead. A centaur. They also feel that uh, humans right there are trespassing. I've never seen a centaur so royal. And they're dangerous at the best of times. The ministry restricts their territory much more. They're going to have a full uprising on their hands. I think a lot of it is because we are animals. You look at the way sort of lions organize their societies, mm -hmm. right? They have these extraordinary extraordinarily specific borders in territories between them that look just like nation states when you look at them. You know, they're oh. often drawn by a river here, an invisible line there, and the sort of, you know, they have their, the, the male lions act as sort of enforcers, right? They'll, okay. the sort of, you know, their job is to patrol their border and, you know, spray in their line, get their scent all around, right? So that every lion knows this is their territory, right? And so as long as it's their pride hunting, right, their lions, right. then uh, they can obviously hunt whatever they want, kill whatever they want. You know, the pride king, whatever, yeah. gets, a, has to, gets the first bite and everything, gets the best taste. Uh, but if a lion crosses over and is hunting and they know it's not one of their pride, they'll kill it. <laughs> exactly, right. They, they'll uh, surround it and kill it. So as far as... How do you connect that? humans, like all beasts, have our cultural, social kind of agreements and values. And sometimes it's savage brutality and sometimes it's generosity. Um, and where I think we, when we cross that boundary is, is when we kill what we don't need, right? That's when we are behaving specifically human as opposed to the way right. an animal would behave, right? Right, right, right. So, uh, and we not only kill, we also imprison, like an, like a, like a, like a lion would kill something to eat it. It would not imprison it and also enslave its babies. Right. We own everything, basically. The whole world. This is our world. The other animals don't, don't, don't feel that they own the world and the giraffe doesn't feel that it's necessarily better than a tiger. And we can do whatever we want because... The ideologies themselves are similar. The mentality that enables such violence is the same. It's the mentality of domination and subjugation, of privilege and oppression. We are created in God's image. The monkey that is not created in God's image, the, the, the cow is not created in God's image. And I feel that maybe it's easier to understand why wizards would feel that they are more divine than everybody else, because they are very, very special.
they are indeed very, very, very special. Like, I feel that this is a miracle that there's only been one Voldemort and one uh, Grindelwald and not a thousand. Because this is just like you are actually better and stronger scientifically, empirically than everybody else. Like, you know, like the Marvel stories, right? Like Spider-Man finds out he has powers and his origin story right. is all great power comes great responsibility, right? right? And it's, it's, it's the superhero <laughs> theme is like when you're super powerful, like do you owe it to society? And you notice Harry Potter, like they never think about that at all. Right. They never think like, wow, we're so powerful, we, we could really help and redeem the world. They're basically their thing right. is like, it's like, hey, how about we just don't slaughter all of them? <laughs> right? and, and then the other guy's like, no, let's kill them all, we hate them all. And like, what counts is like, these, it's like right. a really good hero thing is right. Harry Potter being like, yeah, let's like not kill all the, all the other people. <laughs> this is so extreme. This is extreme. So extreme. It never occurs to them, right? Like great power, great responsibility. It never occurs to them maybe they, they could do things to help the world. Oh, I, I, I feel like this should be its own video. Let's, uh, let's yeah, wrap it up. This has already uh, ended this one. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hey. Thank you, patrons, for supporting the channel, including, uh, including this patron right here. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know what I hear most often from new patrons coming into our Patreon page is that they've been enjoying the God Academy videos for a long time and that they're happy that they finally can support the channel. So you too can be happy. Happiness is just around the corner. It's on patreon.com slash God Academy. Bliss. Just one cup of coffee a month. Come on. I like coffee.